What is up you guys? My name is Austin Marks and welcome to my YouTube channel. So my channel I talk about respiratory therapy, I talk about PA school a little bit, so if you want to see all that, make sure you check out my channel. So if you haven't already, I also have a Facebook group called the RT Club where it's respiratory therapists helping resp other respiratory therapists or respiratory therapist students or even people who are um, thinking about respiratory therapy just so we can all connect and kind of help each other in our career paths. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my RT program. I'm going to be walking you guys through it. I'm going to be going semester by semester. I'm going to be talking about a little bit of the study tips that I learned, um, just how I did things and what got me through my RT program. So uh, my RT program was at a community college. It was an associate's degree. I have a video talking about an associate's degree versus bachelor's degree for respiratory therapy. I talk about the differences. I talk about the advantages versus disadvantages of having one versus the other. So my RT program, I absolutely loved it. Um, I love my instructors. I believe that I couldn't have got through my RT program if it wasn't for them. However, before I even started my RT program, I had to take a few classes. Um, these were known as prerequisites to get into the program. So these included my chemistry class, my AMP 1 and 2, or anatomy and physiology. I had to take some Englishes, psychology, sociology, just all the dumb stuff that you have to take with college. Um, it was just all part of the curriculum. I also had to take a respiratory class, just an introduction to kind of understand the foundation, what respiratory therapy is about, to make sure I wanted to actually do it. So one thing I highly, highly advise for everyone is to meet with the respiratory care advisor and just kind of talk about the program a little bit, get an understanding of the career path because you don't want to spend a bunch of money, go through school, and then not even become a respiratory therapist. So there was someone in my class who made it all the way through school and they don't even do respiratory therapy now. I don't think they even applied to a job, but hey, that's not my loss of money, right? So another thing that my uh, advisor recommended that I do is that I go and shadow. So I went to a hospital, I shadowed one of the respiratory therapists there. He basically took me through the whole day, just told me about his day, what he normally does, all that other jazz, and this is actually the hospital that I work at currently. So once I took all my prerequisites, I officially applied to the program and I was accepted. So my program was five semesters long, so it went um, fall, spring, summer, fall, spring, and then I finally graduated. In my opinion, my first semester was definitely the hardest. So some of the classes I had to take were a cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology. So like I said, for my prerequisites, I already had AMP1 and AMP2. So this laid the foundation for the whole body. However, I actually dug deep into the um, cardiopulmonary system in this class. I just got a better understanding everything and how everything works. I also had a disease class, so I learned about all the disease processes of the cardiopulmonary system. So in this class, I learned about all the diseases of the cardiopulmonary system. So I learned about COPD, asthma, cystic fibrosis, maybe pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum. I learned about CHF, all that other jazz, um, just anything that has to deal with the cardiopulmonary side. I also had a patient assessment class during this semester, so with this class I went ahead and basically understood how to assess my patients, what to look for, what to listen to, so I understood EKGs, breast sounds, heart sounds, I looked at chest x-rays and got a better understanding of what exactly was going on. So this semester I also had clinicals. So. What I did with this clinicals is I actually just got into the hospital and this was my first time personally ever being in the hospital. And I thought the program was set up really well because it kind of put us with different people rather than just a respiratory therapist. So one day I was with the nurse, one day I was with the CNA, one day I was in the OR. I just got a good understanding of who is who in the hospital, who does what. So my first semester, everything was brand new, a lot of information, a lot of brand new information. And personally, I didn't have anyone in my family who was in the healthcare field, so I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I didn't really talk about healthcare when I was at home with my family. It was just all new to me, so I think that's what made it even harder on me. So my first semester, we also started with 18 students, and we ended up with 12 at the end. So it is definitely your hardest, a lot of new information. However, if you stay focused and just follow some of the study tips that I talk about, um, you can definitely get by. So my second semester was definitely not 
the easiest either. So I had pharmacology during this semester and let me tell you, pharmacology kicked my butt. So pharmacology, this was probably my worst class throughout the entire RT program just because it's a lot of drugs, a lot of new words. Um, now I don't have any respiratory problems personally, neither does anyone in my family, so all of these drugs were brand new. I had to learn the dosages, the uh, calculations, what drugs can be used with what other drugs, when to use what drugs. There's just so much information when it comes to pharmacology. However, this is a very vital part of being a respiratory therapist. You need to know when to use what and why are we using it. So I also had an oxygen therapy class where I learned about all the different devices that we use. So all the different oxygen therapies. So when to use a certain device, when not to use a certain device, how to use a certain device. Just kind of building the foundation a little bit more and actually the respiratory therapy part and what we actually do in the healthcare system. So then I had clinicals this semester as well and this is when I first started doing things such as nebulizers, um, maybe ISBs, easy paps, things along that line just to once again build that foundation of some of the more simpler things that we do as respiratory therapists. And then my third semester was probably my lightest semester because it was a summer semester and everything was just kind of crammed together so I can see why they made it a little bit easier on us. So during this semester I had clinicals once again. So during the clinicals during this time I started doing things such as ABGs. I still did things as, such as nebulizers, easy paps. Once again still building that foundation but advancing us a little bit more. So some of the other classes that I had included a cardiopulmonary lab, and then I had a therapeutic class where I was learning about all the therapies once again, just even more things that we do, just getting a better understanding of everything. By this point in my program, about midway through, and I feel like I really had my study technique down. I was getting pretty much A's or B's in all my classes, besides pharmacology, of course, I got a C in that class, but it is what it is. However, my study technique was down packed. I had really good study technique. And I have a whole video about what I used, um, how I used it, and just I go over all that information. So make sure you guys check out that video if you want to succeed. I also feel like I was starting to really understand what diseases were occurring with different patients and when I would use certain drugs, when I would use certain therapies. Just because, like I said, I wasn't ever around patients before in a hospital setting, but now I was with them almost on a weekly basis and I was doing therapies, I was doing drugs. So we look at a patient and be like, oh, so this person needs this drug because this is going on. So I just, everything started to click. So if everything doesn't click for you right away, just remember I was about halfway through my program before everything started to click for me. So my next semester was my fall semester. So this was probably the second hardest semester that I had. So I actually had four more students who ended up failing out of the RT program. However, two people went ahead and joined the class behind us and they ended up passing and graduating. So during this semester it was my critical care semester so I spent a lot of time in the ICU, I spent a lot of time with critical patients. Um, with critical patients there's generally more than one thing going on, especially more than the cardiopulmonary system. So I learned a lot about the neural system, the kidneys, all that other jazz, just so much information during this semester. And I also had to learn mechanical ventilation. So that is a huge, huge concept as well as respiratory therapy. So with mechanical ventilation, I'm gonna make a few videos about how I mastered that, how I learned that. Um, I was looking at different things such as ABGs. What do I do with mechanical ventilation when I look at an ABG? How to go ahead and adjust for my patients? How do I get the best results for my patients? How do I heal them? How do I get them off of the ventilator? Um, I learned about intubating. I just learned so much information during this semester. It was a lot, a lot of information. I can't stress that enough. I did also get ACLS certified during the semester because I was in the ICU, like I said. So I was dealing with critical patients and any time these patients can potentially code or they can go into cardiac arrest, so therefore we have to do CPR. I'm gonna make a whole other video talking about what I do during a code blue or when somebody goes ahead and goes into cardiac arrest. During these situations, you have to be on top of it. You have to know exactly what to do, when to do what. Um, you just gotta be ready and that's part of being a respiratory therapist is you have to be able to critically think. During this semester, I also learned about BiPAPs, CPAPs, um, high flows. So I also got down the ER a little bit during the semester and when patients would come in that were pretty critical, we would go ahead and assess them and do our thing with them as well. My last semester included uh, neonatal pediatrics. So this was actually my best semester. I got 
all ace, so I did fantastic. Um, like I said, got those study techniques down. I was really doing everything that I was supposed to at this point. So even though I did my best in neonatal pediatrics, I work with adults. Um, someday I would like to work with kids. I think that'd be pretty cool. Primarily when I see kids now, it's generally down the ER because my hospital doesn't admit kids. We send them over to a bigger hospital. So with kids, they are kind of a new concept. There are things that go on with kids that don't go on with adults and things that go on with adults that don't go on with kids. Um, all the dosages and calculations are different. For many things, not just um, pharmacology, but mechanical ventilation as well, you have a whole different way of potentially mechanically ventilating babies or kids. So we introduced two new um, ventilators known as the oscillator and the jet for babies. So those are two concepts that are totally going to be new to you. You may not understand them right away because they are pretty difficult. I can make a video talking about them. Um, if you guys want to see that, just let me know. Leave it in the comments. So I spent a lot of time in the Children's Hospital as well as the NICU or the neonatal ICU. So I did see my first kid die during the semester, so that was pretty sad. Um, Bless the respiratory therapists and all the other healthcare workers who do work with children on a daily basis and have to see that every now and then because that was pretty difficult for me. So I also started studying for my boards during the semester. So I started studying probably two months before I graduated. I have a whole video about that. So make sure you guys check out that video just if you're planning on graduating soon and you want to pass your boards, um, just see what I did. Just do exactly what I did and hopefully you can pass and I wish you the best. Well anyway guys, if you guys have any questions whatsoever about my schooling, anything at all, um, just leave it in the comments, I'll try and get back to you. Another thing that really, really helped with me for, throughout the school was I used uh, the Oaks books. So if you don't know what they are, just go on Amazon, type in Oaks uh, Respiratory Therapy. So I believe it's spelled O-A-K-E-S. Um, I can leave a link in the description below as well. Those just those books just light out everything. The little pocket guides, you can take them to the clinical, read them whenever. Um, they were a lifesaver for me. So anyway guys, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.